first we will be creating a grid so i'm just tapping some some task description here for training purpose uh, we will be inputting two description for the task to give us a chance to write another small description after uh, we will have another parameter which is the color of the background i'm just going to do some basic formatting of the top So the next thing I'll be doing, I'll be creating three rows here. One to input a counter. Uh, the second one, which will be just be a buffer so we can uh, format as we like. And the third one, we will be inputting the schedule and also the task description on the left hand side. So here as an example, I'm just going to put example task one, example one, example two, which is be the second part of the descriptions. It has to be short. We are working with Excel, so we don't want a long text here. And then as a color background, I'm just going to have just two to start with, which is light and dark. Next, I will be doing some more formatting and I will be creating a, a grid. So I don't advise you to create a grid like this. I'm just doing it for, for training purpose once again. Uh, because after it's a bit of a mess if you want to remove it but i'm just uh, creating the grid so that you can see it's a bit more visual and then i'm duplicating each task uh, just i'm just going to stop at uh, three or four tasks maybe five tasks i'm just going to put some headings once again so this is just to show you you don't have to input this but it's just to show you i'm just going to alternate between one colon that will be for the symbol that we'll use to create the start and end of our tasks and then the text itself so we'll be alternating symbol text symbol text symbol text and i can do some formatting on this obviously the colon for the symbol should be smaller than one for the text but we can have a look at that later next i will be creating a different tab and i will be putting all the validation under that tab so the first validation uh, that we want to do so is to ensure that uh, only the proper symbols are being entered is the symbol that we'll be using for start, finish or end and then a blank. We can also leave a blank. So I have that as a dynamic table because if you don't like S or E as a symbol to put the start and end then you can have your other types of symbol. You just need to change them here. And then that will be done automatically. Then the next table that we input is the color where I have light and bright here, but I think I should have more light and dark, so I'll be changing that later on. Once again, a little bit of formatting. And the third table that I'm creating is to put the year. So to start with, I have 2024, 2025, and 2026. I'll be starting only with three years at the moment, but uh, we can have five. So it's just a matter of making the table larger. And this way you can reuse it. You just have to change the, the years if you want to do it next year, or if you want to start from a different year, or you could start from the current year if you wanted. Now let's use the data validation table. So the first thing to do is to retrieve the free dates. before the Q1. Next, I will be validating the color itself. Just go to data validation. I have light or bright at the moment, which is hard to tell the difference, but um, I would have light or dark. I would change bright to dark later on and I'll be doing the same for the symbol so this is the symbol we'll be using for start and end of tasks data validation hello list and list I will put the 
three. I'll put the three and it a blank as well because if it's not a milestone, then the start of a milestone, and otherwise it would complain when it's blank. So now this is done. So now what we need to do is we need to paste that field to make sure that the validation is uh, is across the board. So I'm doing it for one year and then I copy it to the, to the year later later. But as a rule, what we do on these two fields on the left, the symbol and the text, can be just reproduced by copying and paste. So I don't want to spend too much time just every time just copying and paste for the full stuff, uh, for the full years. It's just a matter as we understand and if we know how to create the first two cells and we are good to go. The second thing is uh, the formula. So this is the only formula that I believe that there will be in this uh, aside the conditional formatting. So if the previous field is start, so that's the field that we have named at start, then we bring back the description. So if we have a start, then we bring back the description. I put this chart 10 and this is to go to the next line for the description 2. And then I will add the description to itself. So if there is something in a symbol that is start, then I will bring back everything and we can test it straight away. I just need to add a condition for if they, if they hasn't found anything. So that seems to work. If there's S, there's description. There's, if there's N, there's no description. So the same, I'm just copying and paste that. Now, we want to have a counter and this is my second formula, so I was wrong. There is another formula after all. I want to have a counter that I will use to do my conditional formatting. So I create an if with an S. If there is a start in the field below, I will put one. If there is end, I will put minus one. And for the rest, I will leave zero. And that will be, I will be using that for the conditional formatting to know if the task should be within that time frame. I'm noticing that when there is an S, there is a one above. And if I remove the S, now I'm just going straight into conditional formatting. And my conditional formatting will be if the cell is start can put the, the name field here. I will put this color here. So this, this will be the, the, the book ends, if you like, of my tasks. Now, that doesn't work. Why? That's, uh, <laughs> so this is why it doesn't work, because we, we have the, sometimes we need to make sure that it's using the field name and not the hard code start. So you just have to play around. You just need to check. There's no more codes, then you're good to go. And now it works. Now I'm just going to be doing some more formatting, but this time it will be for the task description itself. Now I just have two conditions. The first condition is that the sum of the counter will be at one. So that means there is a task that has started. I log the first E, but I don't log the second one. So this way that's going to add me all the fields that are in a counter row here. So if the sum of all these is one, then I know that I have a task. The second condition is regarding the color. If I have a light color here, I will put a lighter type of blue. Um, I, I, I often play around with colors towards the end, but uh, to start with, I'm just gonna start with a 6699FF. That's a color that um, I thought would go well. But so what, what you need to do also is you need to make sure that those two, the yellow fields are stop if true, otherwise it's going to color also the milestone.
and then I will be duplicating and the only thing I'll be changing is the color itself. I will fill it with a deeper blue this time. Now if I change this to dark, so here I'm just testing that the end is working, so it's been working as well because the sum of all this is zero. So I am removing the locking that I had on the nine and that will allow me to copy and paste this across the board. Otherwise, it would just always refer back to my line nine where the counter is, but here that will carry it across and it will be looking at uh, the, the counter there. For the moment, it's not showing the blue because I haven't copied the counter, but as soon as I copy it across, it should work. I will be just doing some formatting. I removed the, the description that I had for, for training purpose. I'm putting the counter row, I'm just putting into a data and then I group it. So this way I can access them when I want, uh, but uh, I just, uh, this way I put them out of sight. I'll be inserting a, a text box uh, that will uh, give me the flexibility to have this uh, this year into a format uh, of my choosing instead of relying on the cell uh, without messing the other cell, messing up the other cells. So what uh, you need to do is you need to insert the text box, but make sure that uh, you click on the border of the text box, and then you go into the formula field, and then you put the the year here, so it will follow up the the year that you have. Some formatting for that box. Going for my uh, favorite font here, the Benchcraft. <laughs> Benchcraft. Semi bold, semi condensed. Going for a light blue for this. And I'm just going to put a little bit of reflection. So now I'm just selecting that box, Format Painter. Now this time I'm going to add the year here. A way to apply the background is to change the normal format of a cell. So you just right click, modify, and then you put the background that you want. And I've put a deep blue here. Now I have all the grids, so, and I have also the white, that's because I've changed the default value. But uh, you won't have those grids because I've just done it just to show you. But when you build it, as I was mentioning at the beginning of this video, you don't put the grid.
then what I do is I want to have the milestone, the place where I put the, the start and end. I want it to have a, not, not too much in your face, but just a bit, bit of a lighter blue. So I'm just selecting the blue and I'm just putting just a little bit lighter. And then I will be formatting with the same blue. So this way it's there, but it's not too obvious. Now what I'm doing is I'm just adding a white border. I think that will really separate things. But for the S and E fields, I just want to have the same yellow color, uh, orangey colors, but just for the start at the bottom, at the top and on the left hand side. And for the end, just going to put it at the, on the right, the bottom, and at the top. So this way, that's the two bookends that I have here. And now what I need to do is I need to put it on this one, on the blue ones, but I will only put it, just selecting the white first, but I will only put it at the top and at the bottom for those. I just need to I uh, just need to test it now you can see this white and I'm putting a different type of blue here I don't really like the one I have Just going to remove the the outline of that uh, text box. I'll just input a description here, text box with a description. Choose a blue font, a deep blue font for the text and I'm just, I think I'm just going to keep the box white like this. I'm just creating a group as well to for this this task description so we can remove them when we, they're not required just to present the final plan the final strategy plan we can just remove them and we are left with only the tasks there <laughs> 